Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. My name is Steve and today I'm taking a look at the Beretta A300 Outlander 12 gauge shotgun. So if you're looking for an in-depth, detailed review on the Beretta A300 Outlander, let's go. First, taking a look at the selling points directly from Beretta. We want to look and see what the manufacturer says and then put some of those things to the test. Beretta touts the A300 Outlander as the best value in a semi-auto shotgun. And of course, you know, the Beretta name is known for quality products and coming in at an MSRP of $799, this is definitely a value line shotgun with the Beretta name. So I'm curious to see if it holds up to the best value in a semi-auto shotgun. They also tout it as being very tough and durable, but light and well-balanced shotgun that is easy to clean and maintain. Now those are some of the selling points directly from Beretta. Now we're gonna dive in, take a look at some of the specs and put those selling points to the test. The Beretta A300 intended use is hunting, could also be used for shooting clay targets, just a generic 12 gauge shotgun. Taking a look at some of the specs of the Beretta A300 Outlander, it is a 12 gauge, as I mentioned, with a three inch chamber, so it can shoot either two and three quarter inch shells or three inch. This gun has a gas operated system. So generally gas operated system leads to a little bit lighter recoil and what Breda touts about this shotgun is that it has a self-cleaning gas operated system. I'm not gonna put that to the test today, but I would in the future love to test this gun versus another gas operated gun. But I'd love to hear down in the comments what shotguns you'd like to see me compare. Now looking at the weight of this shotgun, Beretta says 7.25 on their website. I threw it on the scale, it came out at about 7.4. Now the 7.25, was for their wood model. I could not find an exact weight for their synthetic. And then of course you have different barrel lengths which can change the weight as well. By the way, this shotgun is the 30 inch version which is not found hardly anywhere. It might actually be exclusive only to Reed Sporting Goods out of Walker, Minnesota, one of my partners. So if you're looking for the 30 inch version, definitely check them out. But this shotgun is also available in 28, 26 and 24 inch barrels. The length of pull of this shotgun comes standard at 14 inches, but it is adjustable. So you can go from 13 inches all the way up to 14 and a half inches. So you have some variation there to help you find the right fit. It's also adjustable as far as the drop and the cast of the shotgun. So you have some options there in one eighth inch increments. Coming right out of the box, the drop at comb is an inch and a quarter and it drops down to two and a quarter inches at the heel. Let's see what this trigger pull feels like and what it comes in on the trigger scale. I better go get my trigger scale, BRB. And we're back. I got my new trigger scale, just picked this up. It is the professional digital trigger gauge by Wheeler. I had a Wheeler before, it was not digital not quite as accurate and this is able to give me functions like averages, min, max, peak, different things like that. So pretty excited about geeking out with this trigger scale. Um, let's give it a run. Any guesses? What do you think this trigger is going to come out at? First pull. Four pounds. 0 0.5 ounces. That is light for a shotgun for sure. Okay, let's enter that one. Let's get an average here. We'll do three pulls. Four pounds, 6.6 .6 ounces. Enter that one. Let's get one more. Four pounds, 12 ounces. So if we put those together, we get a trigger pull average of four pounds, 6.4 .4 ounces. But that's what the scale says. I wanna see what it feels like. I always go by feel. It's crisp, not too heavy. The trigger is a little bit rounded here. My finger does kind of want to slip off. I almost wish it was a little more flat faced, but it feels good. Other than that, that would be my only issue. Nice trigger. Now we're going to take a look at the ergonomics. When I look at ergonomics, I'm looking at the fit, the function, the feel. So I'm looking at things like the charging handle, bolt release, trigger guard, how it feels in the hands, how it's balanced, all these different things. Right off the bat, I would say it feels pretty good in the hands. I like my grips a little bit narrower, but it's pretty comfortable. I like it. Um, the forearm grip feels good. Uh, definitely a gun I could get used to shooting. Um, it's got good texture to it. 
It's a hard plastic, which makes it a little bit slippery, but the texture I think would do ample job of keeping your grip nice and tight. When I'm looking at the controls of this gun, nothing's oversized. I really love oversized controls. Um, the handle, bolt handle, charging handle uh, is not oversized, still fairly easy to operate. The bolt release is a little bit tricky. It's, I mean, you gotta get some good pressure on that thing to get it to go. And of course, here's another thing on this gun. You actually have to depress this to lock it back. Not sure I'm a huge fan of that, but it has its place, I'm sure. This bolt release gets me just a little bit. It takes a fair amount of pressure. My middle finger is well worked out. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to bolt releases, that is. Um, the safety is not hard to get to. It's not easy, it's just, it's a safety. It's an average safety, um, easy to press, and it is ambidextrous. So if you're left-handed and wanna switch that out, you absolutely can. The trigger guard is also not oversized. I think it'd be ample to get a light glove in there. Pretty easy, going with heavy gloves it might get a little bit crowded and with that light crisp trigger, it might be hitting the trigger a little bit early if you got those thick gloves on. When I mount this shotgun, it is maybe a little bit short for me, but like I said earlier in the video, you do have adjustments with length of pull, drop at comb, as well as cast, so you can really fit that to you. It has the double beads. It's got a front and a mid bead. If you like that, I only like beads when I'm really trying to figure out how to fit myself to a shotgun. After that, I'm ignoring the beads, so that's irrelevant. As far as just overall ergonomics, fit, and function, I think for the money, this is spot on. There are guns that have a little bit better controllers, make it a little bit easier to operate, but um, I'm happy with the ergonomics. The controls are maybe just the low point of the fit and function of this shotgun. This shotgun has aluminum alloy receiver, synthetic stock and forearm, and a chrome lined barrel. Um, I say it's spot on for the money. The materials just at look, you know, you can tell that it's a cheaper shotgun. Um, but you're getting that Beretta name, which I think uh, there you, there's quality behind it and a long tradition of quality. And uh, you're getting a shotgun for less than 800 bucks. And we haven't put it to the test yet as far as how well it operates. Uh, but if it operates as they say it does and should, it's a good bang for the buck, that's for sure. Um, when I look at tolerances, just how it seems to come together, the tolerances seem to be tight. There's not much, there's really no forearm movement, which is important to me. Um, everything comes together well, no big ridges or anything that are bothering me. Um, I say the build quality is great, absolutely great for the price. Now this gun does come in a few other variations. You can get it in camo, turkey version, wood version, sporting version. Um, so if those are more of your interest, check those out. I like synthetic, it's just an all around versatile gun. Let's put it to the test. Let's get some rounds through it. First, I'm gonna check the recoil, give you my feedback on how this gun operates. Gas gun shouldn't have a ton of recoil, but let's see. I'm running the recoil test, as I always do with the Federal Top Gun, ounce and an eighth, three dram, 1200 feet per second, eight shot. So without any clays in the air, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot a few rounds, see how it feels. I might close my eyes, just not to be distracted, just to focus in on that feel. Not bad, moderately light, I like it. We might as well try just a few rounds from the hip now, make sure it cycles well. Did a good job of that. If it cycles from the hip, that's one thing, but now we gotta see if it will cycle over the head. This is a position that I shoot from often. It can give guns fits if they're not great at cycling. Got a nice tree trimming over there while I was at it. Whoops. Now we're gonna take a look at how easy this gun is to break apart. This is uh, important to me. I like simple guns that are easy to clean, easy to maintain. This is not a gun I have a lot of experience with. Right before I came out and filmed this video, I did take it apart and I did a quick cleaning. Um, and it's fairly simple. Foreign cap off, forearm off, barrel off. Now here's the part that was a little bit different for me that I wasn't quite used to. A lot of experience with the Winchester SX4. 
on the Beretta, this piece here is attached to the bolt in some way. So I had to figure that out. I ended up taking out the charging handle or bolt handle. And then I took out the trigger group next. Popping this pin is the only bugger of taking this gun apart. Got the pin out, had to use a little force. Trigger group comes out. Then that actually comes apart and we're pretty well broken down for a solid cleaning. So fairly simple to take apart, not a lot of pieces goes together relatively simple once you figure out how this reconnects to the bolt now putting the bolt back in along with this this has to go in at the same exact time can be a little bit challenging especially if you didn't pay attention on how they came apart we're fully operable as far as that goes pretty simple sliding the barrel back on boom Forearm on, forearm cap gets screwed on, lock her down. So we have it put back together. Fairly simple to take apart, fairly simple to put back together. A few things that I found a little bit challenging, this pin is a bugger to get in and out and sliding the bolt and that metal arm that goes out on the magazine tube back in at the same time, working those all together. It just take a little bit of practice. I don't think it's overly hard. Uh, just uh, when it's a new gun, that can be a little bit challenging. So there it is. Um, it's running great so far. I've only cleaned it once and it's running great. Now it's time for the speed test. I love to see how fast semi-auto shotguns can shoot. I'm gonna throw three clays on a timer and see how fast I can shoot them. I'll try this a few different times. We'll come up with the speed because recoil really might feel light, but it's really gonna determine how fast you can get back on target. That's what matters and a timer matters, which I also left back in the house. Be right back. Here's the speed test. I got a few rounds through the Outlander, ready to go. White flyer clays. I'll hit the timer. When I hear the beep, throw the three clays, how fast can I get on and successfully shoot each one? We're gonna average out three scores. Here we go. <laughs> okay, that was a 187, a very horrible first attempt. I tried to time it, then I had to second clutch and go back and miss some clays. This is what practice is all about, folks. Still missed one, but we got faster. One, three, six. Let's get it dialed in. Get faster. Hit them all. <laughs> oh, I may have cheated. Point nine four. But I'm pretty sure I got those clays out of my hand just before the buzzer went off. Well, after further review, I flat out cheated. I released those clays before the buzzer even went off. 125, 125. I tell you what guys, this gun, fairly light recoil, shoots pretty darn fast. I mean, it could shoot faster than I was shooting it. So much of that test relies on just perfect throws. I think one of the better scores I've gotten is a 121, but I like timed it perfectly. So this is right up there with one of the faster guns that I've shot. Um, just a quick summary of what I feel about this gun. I put several hundred rounds through it at this point between uh, when I first got it and today. Uh, this morning when I took this gun out, I did a quick cleaning. It operates really well. It's uh, functioning without flaw. It's light recoil. It's a well-balanced gun, feels good in the hands, mounts relatively well. Like I said, I need to lengthen the pull a little bit. I'm just under six foot. It's a little bit short for me. Overall, for the money, this is a great semi-auto shotgun that I think most people would be happy to own. Um, I've really enjoyed shooting it. Would love to hear what you think. If there's any guns that you would like to see me compare this Breda A300 Outlander to, I would absolutely love to do some versus videos for y'all. So there it is, guys. It's the Breda A300 Outlander. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether in the field or in life, it's only the targets that you're focused on that you're gonna hit. So live target focused. See ya.